If you have $1,000 to spend on not just a gaming PC, but an entire PC gaming setup, then this is the right video to watch. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be talking about a combination of parts that I think is the best way that you can spend $1,000 on a full PC gaming setup. And if you're new here and you wanna see other setup review videos just like this one, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this setup out. UCDKeys.com is a new online platform that sells all types of games and software keys, but most importantly, those Windows 10 Pro keys. UCD Keys is hooking you guys up with a crazy 20% off sale if you use discount code ZT20. For those of you that are still rocking an unactivated version of Windows 10 with that nasty watermark in the bottom right hand corner, click the first link in the description, select buy now, and enter the discount code ZT20. And as you can see here, that drops the price down to $13, which is amazing. This is actually my personal method of activating Windows 10 on my build guide. So if you're interested in doing the same thing, head on down to the first links in the description. All right, so for the first concept that we need to talk about real quickly is how you're gonna allocate that $1,000 budget towards the PC and towards your peripherals. In today's video, we're gearing more towards the performance side of things as our PC here is $700. And that doesn't leave us with a lot of money for everything else. You don't necessarily have to spend this much on the PC. If you're more interested in having higher end peripherals to experience the joy of PC gaming with some baller keyboards and mice and whatnot. I actually have another $1,000 setup guide where the PC only costs $550. I'll link that one down in the description. So we'll talk about this $700 PC in just a minute, but let's kick things off with the mouse here because honestly, I was mostly looking forward to this one during my testing. This here is a Razer Viper Mini Ultralight Wire Gaming Mouse and it only comes in at a price tag of $40. This is actually my very first ultralight gaming mouse that I've ever used and I honestly picked this one up because I wanted to see what all this hype was about. I can certainly see why people love using such a lightweight mouse. It feels like a feather and you can whip it all across your mouse pad, but just as a fair warning, if you haven't used one like this before, it will take you a long time to get used to it. I'm personally still not used to it, and I think at this point I prefer to just have a heavier mouse, but with this mouse, you're not just getting a budget gaming mouse with one of those like budget sensors in it, you're getting a high quality sensor that Razer uses in their mice, so this just isn't your typical budget gaming mouse product. Sticking with our budget theme, the keyboard I chose is this Red Dragon K552, and this one is no stranger to the channel as well. I actually picked up my K552 in a Red Dragon peripheral bundle for my $200 full PC gaming setup video, and in that video, I explained that the quality of this keyboard doesn't match anything else in that bundle. In my opinion, the K552 is worth the price tag of that entire bundle at just over 50 bucks, but when you buy it by itself, it actually only costs $37. This is a fully mechanical keyboard and has almost blue-like switches as they're pretty lightweight and very loud and clicky. Let me know what you guys think of those switches down in the comments section. And finally, the K552 is indeed rocking a nice 10 keyless design. It's actually a pretty minimal keyboard, which I like. But one thing to note is that the backlighting can only go red on this cheaper model, but there is a more expensive version for full RGB. Now we get to the headset and I wanted to stick with that red and black color scheme. And I went with a very easy choice of the HyperX Cloud Stinger. Here in 2020, it only costs 50 bucks. And although this has been out for several years now, it's still just a really good option. I do have a super old dedicated review video on this headset, so please don't go watch that one. But honestly, there's just not that many options at this price range that I would recommend outside of like the Corsair HS60. The Cloud Stinger is very comfortable to use in its price range. It can be muted by sliding the microphone to the up position. And like I said earlier, it's continuing our red and black color scheme. Speaking of which, we got to include a mouse pad of some sort for our $1,000 setup. And here I bought the K-Trio Extended Gaming Mouse Pad for just $17. Now this thing is literally as clean as it gets. There are a bazillion options on Amazon if you're looking for ones with like a design on them, but this one was just $17 and it was really highly rated, but yeah, it's just a black extended mouse pad. I do want to point out, although it's shipped rolled up, it lays out perfectly flat very quickly and it's heavy and thick enough that it doesn't move around the table at all. Pretty high quality to be honest. Speaking of high quality, the monitor that I chose is the same monitor that I used in last week's dedicated review video on, and if you haven't seen that video, then please go check it out because this here is the best budget 100 
144Hz gaming monitor on the market right now. This is the Asus VP249QGR that only costs $160 and it's rocking a 23.8 inch 1080p 144Hz 1 millisecond free sync display and yep, it's even IPS. There aren't too many options on the market right now that can even compete with specs like this for the price and I'm going to be featuring this in more full setup guide videos in the future for sure, just FYI. The reason why this monitor is so cheap is because the stand is absolutely terrible. There's literally only tilt adjustment, but Asus decided to throw in more of the budget towards the actual display and nothing else, so we're getting some serious price to performance here. Because it's an IPS display, gaming, and even color work if you want to looks really nice, and being able to game at 144Hz is always my personal recommendation. Now to be able to game at 144Hz, you're going to need a pretty beefy computer, and this over here is my custom $700 gaming PC that I also made a dedicated review video on a couple of weeks ago. If you didn't catch that video, this is actually just a combination of parts that I had laying around my studio, so it's not the most optimized build on the planet, but it's indeed rocking a Ryzen 3 3200G and a 1660 Ti, so it'll definitely get us up to those higher frame rates. I stated in that video that the only reason I used the Ryzen 3 3200G because once again, it's all that I had laying around my studio, I would certainly recommend upgrading it to something like a Ryzen 5 1600 AF or even the newer Ryzen 3 3300X, and those will get you much better results than what this can give you. There's also 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in here, all of it's inside a deep cool MeCube 310 case, which I'm definitely a fan of it in terms of aesthetics, and the build produces some pretty nice numbers. During my testing in the dedicated video, we got an FPS average of 153 in Fortnite in 1080p in pro settings, 183 frames per second in CSGO in 1080p in low, and even got 96 FPS in the way harder to run Call of Duty Modern Warfare with medium settings. With the parts list out of the way, I do want to re-emphasize that concept that I said in the beginning of this video, how to allocate your budget, and if you have $1,000 to spend on a PC setup or any budget really, I would first ask yourself how much money do you want to spend on just the gaming PC? I would personally recommend not going any lower than about $500. You don't want baller peripherals in a potato gaming PC, but at the same time, I really wouldn't recommend spending any more than what I did of $700. If you spend $800 or even $850 on just your gaming PC, that's only going to leave you with $200 or $150 for everything else, and that is certainly going to lead to your monitor bottlenecking your entire system. Please don't put $800 into a gaming PC and then pair it with a 1080p and 60Hz display. Make sure your PC has something to output all of those frames into either a 1440p and 60Hz panel or a 1080p and 144Hz model, which is what I would personally recommend. Well, that wraps up my full $1,000 gaming PC setup guide. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of this setup or what you would personally do to change it. And after that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on Twitch because I've been streaming every Tuesday and Thursday over there at 8 p.m. Eastern time.